Let's start with making some sauces. I'm going to start with using tempeh. Because as you probably know, tempeh is more natural. It's not processed. It's soybeans that are cooked, but then fermented into a, into a paste or a block. And it has a slight fermented feel to it, which adds a meaty, like earthy feel that tastes really good. Especially if you use it very thinly sliced or crumbled or shredded into the dish. It adds flavor. It's so strongly flavored that you don't want to take a big bite of it. But adding small amounts in the dish, sprinkling throughout the whole dish, it really adds a nice element to that, to whatever you're making. You could add it to burgers, you could add it to, to um, you know, loaves that you're making, and you can take it and put it into strips, and you could bread it in cornmeal and bake it. And today we're, we're mixing it into a sauce to use um, into a pasta bolognese sauce, which a traditional bolognese sauce is usually made with meat and tomato sauce and onion, garlic. And we're going to instead use the tempeh in place of meat. And tempeh is very digestible. And actually, because it's fermented, the phytates are fermented out. So the nutrients are even more absorbable, very nutritious, very high in protein, relatively low in calories. And um, adds an excellent nutritional quality to your diet, especially if you're into athletics or, or weightlifting and you want the extra protein. So it's high in protein. and, and, and and soy milk and tofu are moderately, moderately processed because tofu was made from soy milk. This is a step earlier in the process. In other words, this is a soybean, it's not processed. It's just like eating an edamame. So it's, it's healthier to actually eat tempeh and edamame than it is to eat tofu and soy milk. So anyway, okay, so here's the, here's the tempeh. So I'm just gonna open it up and take a piece and just pulse it we could chop it in a wooden chopper with a knife. We could use it in one of those shredding things that you rub against, so you could like a, a shredder, a million different ways we can do it. Here they have the S-blade and the food processor. We can just pulse it a little bit in the food processor. <laughs> figure out how to use this. You just leave it down. Oh yeah, I see. Yeah. So we're gonna make it, you could, I could just crumble it a million different ways, but you could pulse it in the Vitamix, but here we'll just pulse it in this, make it into a tempeh crumble. Yeah, it's done. Looks like you make cauliflower rice, right? Okay, the tempeh is crumbled. Let me make the, the sauce, which is pretty simple, but there are different ways to make the sauce. One way I like to do it, if you really wanna bring out the flavor, is not to put the water in the pan, make sure the pan is very hot first. That's the secret, to get the pan really hot before you throw this thing into the pan. You throw it into, an, into a, you can put it into when the pan's not so hot by adding the water in the pan. Then it'll be okay, it won't stick. But if you want to get the, if you want to not add water and get a little more caramelization of the onion, especially if you're making it for, a, you know, you want to little, bring out a little more flavor for, for, for um, guests or something, to really caramelize the onions and make it more flavorful, you get the pan very hot first and throw the onion in first without water. So it starts to sizzle and caramelize a little bit, and then you can put the mushroom and the water in. So that's what I'll do this time, just to show you that technique. Okay, so assuming that this is, assuming that the pan is hot, let's see if it's hot, we're putting an onion in. And of course, you, you really want to finely chop the onion. Now we put it in there. There you go. You hear the sizzle? I have a little guy under the table going <laughs> You want to use a big pan, bigger pan as possible. Large, high flame, hotter pan as possible. Bigger the pan, thank you. All right. So you want the bigger pan as possible because you don't want the onion to pile up in the pan. You want the onion to top, touch the bottom of the hot pan so it caramelizes it right before it turns brown. We don't want to, that's already caramelizing. If you could see it, but the whiteness of the onion is becoming more translucent already. See, it's already changing the color and the smoke's coming off it. So that's enough. Okay, a little touch of water. And then the mushrooms. And the mushrooms make their own water, so you really don't have to put the water in. Because this pan is such a big pan, and it's going to burn off the, it's going to burn off the moisture so quickly. I'm going 
going to put a little bit of water in, and I want to stop the caramelization process there. Okay. So now I can add my vegetable broth and tomato sauce. Oh, the carrots, yeah, a little bit. Put all the other ingredients in, I guess, at this point. Tempeh. You can throw the tempeh in there, too. So now I'm adding the vegetable broth. I'm going to make the sauce. Thank you. And the tomato sauce. And tomato paste, to more flavor. And you could also add the dried tomatoes that you had soaked and chopped to mix little lumps of dried tomato in here. Or you could blend dried tomatoes into the Vitamix with tomato sauce if you don't have tomato paste. Just take the tomato sauce and blend the dried tomatoes in there to thicken this tomato sauce into more like a paste. So the only thing I did different than the recipe is that I sauteed the onion first in a dry pan. The pasta bolognese. Page 57. <laughs> so you just let that cook another couple of minutes so the carrots get softer. And, the, and it's really, you have the sauce ready. And it's a little bit lumpy. The carrots are shredded. The um, tempeh is lumpy. Is lumpy. And you just plate it over the pasta. So here's some bean pasta. Is this soybean pasta? <coughs> so there's black bean pasta, there's lentil pasta, there's red lentil pasta, there's um, black bean pasta, there's soy pasta, there's all types of pastas, right? It's almost ready now. I want to shut the flame off, assuming that it cooked out a little more. So it's a little, I probably shouldn't have put that extra water in the, that I did when I was putting, I didn't realize I had so much, um, I had vegetable broth there to add to the sauce, so I didn't really need the extra water. So we cook faster now because it wouldn't be so watery. It wouldn't have to cook it longer to cook the water out. That's the mistake I made. But in any case, now we're going to add the mustard and the spices. Oh, this is oh, this isn't mustard. This is my this is garlic nutter. You know what this is, right? What we talked about yesterday. We're going to add garlic nutter into it. But I'm I'm waiting to add the garlic nutter and the spices so I don't cook the spices, the the, the herbs. I don't want to be cooked too much in there. I want to shut the flame off. and then put the fresh herbs and the spices in. You can always, if you're grinding your fresh spices or herbs, and then you lightly toast them on a dry pan just for a minute, it also can change and bring out the flavor. So you can always, another option, especially when using things, you know. So that thickened the sauce a little bit, made it more creamy by putting the garlic nutter in there. Thank you, Linda. And now I'll put the spices in. So this is a little bit of Bragg's Aminos. A tablespoon of Bragg's aminos has 300 milligrams of sodium. So if I'm putting, if I'm making, there's a lot of sauce here. This is like for six people at least. So if I, if I could li literally put in two tablespoons of Bragg's, it only has 600 milligrams of sodium. I'm getting it to six people. It's only 100 milligrams of sodium per person. So that's reasonable. I wouldn't use that much Bragg's amino acids for one person because that would be too much sodium if it was one dish. But I make this is to serve six, six or more people here, right? And now I'll put the spices in. Here's the chili powder and the, um, what do I have there? Oregano, ba uh, dried oregano and dried basil. Okay, I'm gonna shut this off now. Plate it over the, So as you know, this is a red sauce. You could have used garlic, nutter, onion, carrot, or dried tomatoes. Add the garlic nutter to it, which you had made in your refrigerator, and make that any kind of sauce. But the, but the uniqueness of this sauce, of course, is the chopped tempeh. 